So here's a fact, and I wish it wasn't true guys. Society in general does not like old things. We do not like being old or getting old or being around old and definitely don't like buying old. And this is especially true with our tech gadgets. We want the latest and greatest. It's because how the tech world works. Everything ages so fast in there. It's like dog years to the power of four in there. So I want to challenge that mindset because I don't think everything that's yesterday necessarily means obsolete. Case in point, Samsung recently launched back in August their flagship smartwatch called the Galaxy Watch 3. And it, when it came out, of course, it generated a lot of positive buzz. But we're not here for that. We're here for this guy instead the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2. And believe it or not, this is more than a year old, a year and two months or something like that. Does that mean it's obsolete? I don't think so. I believe this so-called old dog has a lot of life in it yet. In fact, I think it's a little bit premature to call this an old dog. And when you compare this with the Watch 3, this is a massive, massive bargain. When you compare this with the Watch 3, this is still a bloody good watch because it has good hardware and it's still updated by Samsung constantly. So let's find out why you should take a closer look at the Active Watch 2 because if you're looking for a smartwatch, I think this might be even better than the Watch 3 in terms of a deal. Let's find out after these messages why I think so. So here's the Galaxy Watch Active 2 in the flesh guys and like usual I'm going to shoot off some specs before we take a closer look at the watch. Now the Active 2 is available in a few colors, this one's the black and there's also silver and pink gold. It's also available in the LTE and non-LTE models and this one is the non-LTE model and obviously the LTE version is going to be the battery set part of the two just so you bear in mind. This watch also sports Samsung's Tizen OS 4.0. There's also exactly 768 megabytes of RAM on board and four gigabytes of storage. Don't be put off by the RAM size, guys. The Exynos chip along with the Tizen OS seem to work really well together for a smooth experience. The only strong lag that I experience is after initial boot up when apps like take a tick more than usual to launch and switch between screens. But once it's preloaded, it flows pretty well. There's Bluetooth 5.0 here and also NFC guys that allow you to use Samsung Pay because you know, this is Samsung after all. In terms of battery life, it's rated at one and a half to two days, but I consistently got around one and a half days or under one and a half days with full notifications on and intermediate heart rate tracking turned on as well. When you're tracking activities with GPS though, you'll be watching the battery deplete really fast. For example, a three to four hour activity track with GPS and barometric sensors on, you eat up about 35 to 40% of battery life, which is pretty drastic. The weight is a plus point of this watch, guys. It's only 33 grams with the straps on. Water resistance is a healthy 5 ATM or IP68 equivalent, so it's good for swimming and definitely good for washing hands and showers and such like that. Uh, but PSA, don't operate the buttons when the watch is submerged. Also included in the box is a magnetic charging dock. This has a two and a half foot cable, so it's a nice length from the power source to the watch but there are no extra straps included though. All right guys, now let's take a closer look at the watch and right off the bat, you're greeted by this really bright and crisp 1.4 inch Super AMOLED screen. It's 360 by 360 pixels and it is protected by a layer of Gorilla Glass DX+. There are two sizes available by the way guys in terms of diameter. There's 40 millimeters as well as this one, the 44 millimeters, which really makes a difference in the screen size just in case you're cross shopping between the two. The strap is swappable just like any other smartwatch. You just have to pull on this spring-loaded clip. It's 20 millimeters in case you're wanting to find accessories for this. Pop this off or pull that off and then you can switch it out. Now, looking closer to the watch, you have the speaker grill on the left side. And on the right side, you have the microphone port flanked by the back and the home keys or buttons. And at the top, you have the barometric sensor. And somewhere behind the screen here is an ambient light control sensor, which is really nice to see, but expected at this price range. And over in the back, we find one of my favorite design elements of this watch, which is this really wide back cover. It spreads the weight of the watch out really well. And as you can see, I just took this off and it barely left a dent in there. I can wear this for days on end and be super comfortable. Now, right here in the middle is the eight heart rate sensor and there are eight photo diodes that surround it. So when you combine all the sensors, the sensor array in this whole watch, you can track the, your usual activities, your heart rate, sleep, stress, even menstrual cycles, VO max, and the recently activated ECG mode, which is really nice to have. One thing that really helps with the comfort of this watch is also the strap itself. It's really nice, soft PU, and this really nice design element right here, when you've found your proper notch and want to store away your extra or excess strap, 
you slot it right under actually and this tucks right against your wrist so it doesn't flop around on the outside and doesn't come uh, undone really easily so when you're working out you don't have to worry about it and it's actually pretty comfortable there's no irritation and i can wear this for long times and also it nev never hurts at all so that's really great i love this design element now, a little word about usability. Using a Tizen Power Watch is very similar in experience to Wear OS. Say from the home screen, you can swipe left for notifications. When you swipe down from the home screen, again, you get quick access to quick settings. When you swipe right, you get access to your decks or your uh, widgets, which is really nice. Apps launch pretty fast, especially once it's preloaded after boot up. So if I launch Samsung Health right here, it just launches right away. Or if I open calendar, it pops right up. So that's really nice and smooth. Everything is really smooth considering there's only 768 megabytes of RAM. Now, navigating on this watch is your usual fare. You have your gestures and the back button and of course, Samsung's own uh, scrolling around the bezel right here, which I really don't like. I like it fine on the main screen, but once you enter other apps, it kind of interferes with their UI. I'll mention this later on in the negatives. But other than that, there's another thing that I wish that was better implemented, which was the back uh, button or the back gesture for that matter. It works well on the home screen. If you have to go back, you just swipe from left to right. But once you're in another menu or another screen, like say the settings right here, and you're playing around, yada, 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 and want to go back, you have to use the back button. You can't swipe left to right to go back, as you can see. So it's kind of a disjointed ergonomics right here when I'm scrolling with the screen and playing around with everything. And suddenly I have to press a physical button. It's a lot more effort than needed. It would be nice to just quickly gesture back to the home screen, for example. Another aspect of the Active 2 is its companion app. And once you're in here, you find out just how customizable this watch is. It's not even funny how many things you can play around with. And this is really one of my favorite aspects of the watch and Tizen itself. So from the top here, you can see notifications. You can basically turn on anything, what you want to see or not. The app's the same thing. You can reorder them. But one of my favorite parts is Advanced where here you can turn on and off the touch bezel. If it irritates you a lot, you can turn it on and off. There's wake up gestures, touch wake up, and water lock. This one is really cool, where say if you're in the water and sometimes water droplets or in the shower or whatever, water droplets do activate the watch by accident. And if you activate this water lock, it just shuts off the ability. Touch sensitivity is if you're wearing gloves, this increases the sensitivity of your watch. And then right down here are different kinds of notification controls. Do not disturb good night mode and theater mode. So good night mode is you go to sleep, it turns all the screens down and everything. Theater mode is very similar. Down here, the SOS mode is really, really cool. It's kind of like the life alert thing. If you fall, all the sensors will pick up uh, that you've fallen and it will contact emergency contacts and let them know where you are and what happened and you know just keep them in touch so it's really cool like that the app is so there's so much fun and so much things to do and it really is too much for me to talk in one video but this is the app in the gist and the basic idea is everything is really customizable so guys if you haven't heard i'm trying to get to 5,000 subs and only you can get me there so if you haven't already please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking the subscribe button down below and turning on the bell notification icon that will be super helpful so get to it, get me to 5,000 subs, back to the program. That way. Now, here are some of my top favorite things about the Active 2, and first of all, is the price. Now, when you compare this with the Watch 3, and I know they're in different categories, the Watch 3 is much higher end, but when it comes to feature set and price, the feature set part is on par now with the Watch 3 thanks to updates, so it now has things like ECG and VO Max tracking. When it comes to the price, this thing at its bigger size, the 44 millimeter model is $270. The Watch 3, the 45 millimeter model, 400 bucks. That's a huge disparity right there. So in terms of a bargain and in terms of feature set, if you're looking just for that and just ignoring the design, if you like something chunkier, go with the Watch 3. But if you want something svelte and light like this and for a cheaper price, this would be it. So guys, this was my first experience with a Tizen OS watch. So when I compare this with Wear OS from Google, for example, Samsung adds so many nice little features that makes this watch so much more fun and convenient to use on a day-to-day -day basis that I'm surprised Google had not done in the first place. And you wonder why Wear OS is going down the gutter. But anyway, Samsung adds things like theater mode. When you walk into a cinema, for example, or a dark room, you can press that button and it turns down the brightness of the screen and turns on silent mode. Really fast, really convenient. And my next favorite feature is the ability to clear wet speakers. So after you shower or go for a swim, you can manually turn this on and it will play a specific frequency or a bunch of sounds to clear the speaker. It also does this automatically after a swim track, for example. That's really, really nice. The other thing that I really like is the flashlight. It actually works. 
On most watches, when you do flashlights, they're more like glow sticks. On this guy, it just leverages the AMOLED screen and just turns up the brightness and I can actually see and find my way in the darkness with this thing. Really nice. Another win for this watch is in the comfort level, guys. I can wear this for days on end and be super fine. No itching or discomfort in any way. And as we saw in a close-up earlier, I attribute this to the really wide base plate at the bottom that seems to spread out the weight on your wrist really, really well. The other thing is, it's just really smart choices of materials, really soft PU, and everything is light, really comfortable to wear all the time. So Samsung has this down pat. So we all know that not everything can be rosy, which means it is time for the negatives, guys. And the first one on my list is, for a product that has the word active in it, it sure is dainty and vulnerable looking. I've had some close calls with that powder coated aluminum body, guys. So I can see it being marred and scratched pretty easily if you're not too careful. Long term use, I'm kind of afraid for this. I'm not too afraid for the glass, but that body is weak sauce. I wish that used a thicker gauge aluminum, but as it is, it helps with the weight, but it's not very strong against harder objects. So that's something to be mindful of. Another downside that I notice is with the notification system, it is not very consistent or reliable. Any email or text notifications, for example, that come in don't always come through on the watch. I get it on the phone, but not on this guy. So I'm not sure if this is specific to Tizen OS or with the watch itself, but either way, I'm not a fan of it. And since we're talking about Tizen, I wanna focus on a couple of areas, its ecosystem and app availability. And personally, I'm on the fence on this one. I'm not sure if it belongs in the positives or the negatives, but I'm gonna present this anyway, and you can decide for yourself. In terms of app availability, let's face it guys, Samsung just has a much smaller store and selection than Google or Apple. And I like that because you still can find all your core apps like Spotify and podcasts and, and Pandora and such, and you, it's less glut with crap apps that look like it was made by a high schooler or a kindergartner. But in terms of the ecosystem, this is where I go back a little bit into the negative territory is you're stuck in the Samsung world. There's no Google apps that you can get straight from the store. I'm not sure if you can sideload it, but there's no Google Maps, for example. So as a Google user, I'm kind of stuck and I wish you know, they had that kind of selection or availability. So it's really up to you, personal preference, but as it is, I'm not sure. I'm just really on the fence on this one. And the last negative that I have, and this was the biggest irritation that I had using this phone, is that artificial rotating bezel feature that they have. You can turn it on and the top side and the bottom side of the glass acts like a rotating bezel in place of a physical bezel. And it doesn't work most of the time and half of the time it gets in the way of other apps UI. So. I suggest turning it off and never use it again. Oh yes, there's one more thing guys, and this has to do with activity tracking accuracy because this is an activity watch and it'd be kind of silly not to say anything about it. But I put this in the neutral category because the Samsung performs just as well as other smartwatches that I've tested so far. I took this on a five mile hike with a 680 feet elevation gain and it performed pretty darn well. Uh, the heart rate accuracy was about five to eight beats per minute off compared to my manual testing, which is good. And in terms of distance, it was 0.1 of a mile off, which I think personally could be better. And in terms of barometric measurement, it was about 25 to 35 feet off, which really is the norm for smartwatches which means it's workable. So after taking everything into consideration, guys, from the positives to the negatives, to my time with it and the impressions that I gathered from it, to the value for money quotient when you compare this with other brands and even from within Samsung, I can't help but be super impressed by the Active 2. In fact, I wanna give this guy a gear up score of eight and a half out of 10. Not bad for a one-year-old device, right? Well, actually not bad for a one-year-old anything. So this watch is perfect for the smartwatch connoisseur who's active, who wants something lightweight and fast and very customizable and also very svelte. And also if you're a Samsung fan, this is perfect for you because then you have access to Samsung Pay and Bixby. But this watch is not for you if you want something more robust and if you're tired of Samsung or you just want the latest and greatest. Well, there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode, and I hope you come back next Friday for a new one. You guys are super awesome. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel. Yes, mash and kill that button down below and tell your friends and family about it because your support helps. And also, you can help me get 5,000 subs because we're this close. And also, you can visit my Patreon page down below where you can buy me a cup of coffee or tea or something like that. And remember, you can thumbs up if you like this video and comment nicely down below. And thumbs down. Hmm. <laughs> Thumbs down to those of you who are not planning to vote. We have two more weeks before we vote, and if you're not planning to do it, thumbs down to you. I'm going to find you and TP your house. 
But that's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching this, and I hope you do something nice for somebody this weekend. Show some love in the world, as always. And I love you guys. Peace out. Until next time.